This is NDTV. And you are watching NDTV Prime. Welcome to the Property Show. Karnataka government's decision to build a steel bridge in Bangalore has left the citizens divided. Today's South Special comes to you straight from the heart of Bangalore, where our colleague Maya Sharma is standing by to find out from the citizens on why are they crying foul. A bridge. By definition, a bridge is something that is meant to bring people together, to help bridge a divide. But a steel bridge in Bangalore, a massive infrastructure project, is dividing people very sharply those for, those against the project. Now, this project meant to actually decrease the time taken to travel to Bengaluru's international airport will cost almost 1,800 crores, and for many people, a higher cost will be the more than 800 trees that will be lost in the process. There are those who feel it's a great idea. There are those who are very, very strongly against. And we're joined by both sides. We have administrators who are planning that bridge, we have politicians on both sides of the divide, and we have concerned citizens as well. Joining us first, the Assistant Secretary of Urban Development, this entire idea of the bridge, Mr. Mahindra Jain, why did it suddenly spring up? What is the motivation for this? Well, for one, it hasn't sprung up immediately, urgently now. It has been on the anvil for a long time, and we all feel that Bangalore is a beautiful city, we are all very proud of our city and the only problem in Bangalore, everyone agrees, is that the infrastructure has not kept pace with the growth that the city has seen in recent years. Bangaloreans need more mobility, better infrastructure, better services, better amenities and we have a lot of things which have been planned for that. The flyover from Basaveshwar Circle to Hebal is one effort to decongest the city. An effort to decongest the city and we're actually very close to where that planned bridge is actually going to start off. A steel bridge, that, that phrase is really catching everybody's idea. The steel, the whole steel of it is going to heat things up. It's not necessarily, what is a steel bridge about, Mr. Uh, Pierre Nike? Pierre Nike is an engineer with the BDA. Yeah, yeah. This is not a steel bridge, it is an elevated corridor starting from Chalukya Circle to Hebar. So where does the steel bridge yeah, I'll, I'll come, come to you, I'll come to you. Mm -hmm. There are two, two, three options for the bridge, construction of bridge. One is the steel, other is the concrete. Yes. Why we selected the steel is for the fast construction so that it can okay. be completed within 24 months. Okay. If, I, if I go for the concrete, it will take some four to five years. And since it is a main approach road to the KIL, we need to complete within 24 months. That is why we selected the steel. Again, this signal field corridor is approved in 2011 by CTTP in the government of Karnataka. Okay. In 2011. In the last 4-5 years, the planning has been made and the final DPR was uh, done in 1415. Then it was tendered, one you know, of the best e-procurement and e-tendering in Karnataka, which is the famous in the entire country. Accordingly, the tender procedures have been followed and finalized. E-tendering, everything above board. Now, Mr. Dinesh Kundra, Congress leader here, working president of the Congress party. It was in the Congress manifesto, it was in the budget, but really people are saying, the cynics or maybe the realists are saying that there has to be something more. This is a huge, hugely funded project and the Congress has other motivations for this. You know, making wild uh, you know, allegations is, I think, uncalled for. Now the Metro, we are spending totally, I think, more than 30,000 crores. So are you suggesting that uh, governments are making money out of the Metro construction? So you know, these kind of uncalled for allegations, even before the project is even taken off, is something I think is politically motivated and also people who are against this uh, uh, infrastructure, major infrastructure project for Bangalore, some of them have got good intentions, saving the trees and you know it uh, spoils the, uh, the facade of Bangalore city, okay. all that. They may have good intentions but there are a lot of people involved in this who are politically also against the government. So they are trying to you know, create a situation where government is corrupt, government wants to make money out of this, they want to use it for funding for elections. You know, ridiculous kind of statements have, have come out, which have, they are trying to mislead the people. 
is not, there's absolutely no truth in this. It's part of a commitment to the people of this uh, state. It's part of a budget speech in 2014 when CM announced it as a steel bridge from uh, uh, Basweshwar Circle to Hebbal. For two years, we did all the processes, tendering and finalizing the, the contract, re renegotiating the contract with the, uh, with the bidder. All this was done transparently. So when the project is going to start, suddenly after some four or five years, people wake up and say, don't do it. You know, it shows that some of them are well-meaning, but uh, I think there are many in this who have got different intentions. Politically motivated, ridiculous statement. Now, some of those charges, Mr. Suresh Kumar, senior leader of the BJP and former law minister here as well. You have also made those charges in an open letter to the chief minister. You have said that this project is not a good idea. He's saying it's all above board, nothing to do with it. First of all, I want to make it very clear that none of us are against infrastructure. We know the problem. We know the major problem in Bangalore, which is traffic. I wrote a letter to CM on 13th October. I made three points very, very clear that in June, the cost of the project was 1,350 crores. In September, it increased to 1,800 crores. The second thing is, those who are opposing, yes, my, my dear friend uh, Dinesh said, there are well-intentioned people, there are politically motivated people also. But those who are in the forefront, in opposing, they are eminent persons of this city. There are former town planners, there are architects, etc. Their one request, their one demand is to have a public hearing. Why the government is hesitating to have a public hearing? After all, it, it, it will cost nothing. So these two things make it very clear that it is not as transparent as the government is making it. Sridhar Pabisheti of the Nama Bengaluru Foundation, he's raising the issue of transparency of being answerable to the people. What are your thoughts on this? Do you feel that it has been accessible to the public? Um, I was really surprised that Mr. Dinesh Gunarav claimed this to be a transparent process. 14th of July of this year, we wrote a, we, we applied under RTI, RTI which probably is a claim to fame of the Congress party, saying please give us the DPR. Yes. Please give us the feasibility reports. Please give us the EIA, Environmental Impact Assessment, and any studies that you have done yes. to this. We got a reply that has almost killed RTI in this institution. They said the information you seek has to be created. So the we information was not there. It was not. We necessary. don't know, and and it said that the DPR was prepared 11 months ago, but we did not get three months ago. We are yet to get the DPR. When was the DPR released? Okay. 36 hours before a citizen protest was out there in the anvil. This, these are serious charges that the plans were not out, that the details were not available on the RTI. Yeah. See, we are doing so many projects in the country. Nowhere DPR has been published anywhere. And since the first time in Bangalore they asked for the DPR, we immediately uh, put it in the website. Uh, otherwise, I you... Disagree. No, 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 I, I will disagree. tell you. So afterwards, afterwards. Yeah, see, you just show me one example where the DPR has been placed in the website. Still, BDA did a f first time in the Bangalore that we uh, uploaded in the website. So, so they did give you, they did give you those answers? No, what no, no, this is blatant misrepresentation by BDA and I take strong objection to this. Right to Information Act says that any documents that, that, that is there in the government has to be given out when the citizen asks. What is his discretion? Is he the Maharaja of Mysore that he has the discretion to give the DPR for the first time in the history? <laughs> is a DPR a government document? Yes, we received so many RTI applications. We have given the reply. If you want, I can give you the copy also. And we have given, we have not refused anything. We have given all the detailed RTI, when it is to be given, what kind of, in what permission it has to be given. So all the I details, can give you the copy of that. All the details My thing for him is, okay, he says few months there's a delay in DPR. BDA is saying that as per rules, mm -hmm. The, when the DP has to be given, they have certain rules under RTI itself, they can they can give it at a later stage. But my question is, DPR is available with, the, with him now, let him look at it now. Instead of just keeping on talking that I don't, do not have the DPR, if you say that technically yes. this is wrong or yes. there is something wrong in this, uh, in, in the estimate that uh, the BDA has made yes. in 1,800 crores, if there's a lot of fraudulent uh, uh, reasons for making this uh, higher cost, let them prove it. Instead of just talking and the same uh, question being asked over and over again, everything is there, all the details are there, 
they, uh, they can go ahead and ask. Secrecy. Yeah. I've, I've been told that uh, the uh, uh, RTI application has been replied to, but in the RTI Act, there is a provision, there is an appellate authority. For some reasons, if they did not get the information that they had asked for, then there is the appellate authority. Uh, like, I mean, as the chairman of the BDA or as uh, additional chief secretary of the government uh, looking mm -hmm. after urban development, no one came and approached me and said that they had asked under RTI for this information and it was not made available to them. So, I mean... Uh, Nobody said that. Yes. Now, clearly, clearly openness, clearly openness and transparency about this. There are questions. I mean, I, well, BDA and the Congress party trying to say that information is available, but Priya Chetty Rajagopal, you're a, you work as a corporate executive, you're also a concerned citizen here. We know, anyone who lives here in Bengaluru knows that traveling in the city is a nightmare. This is a project which ostensibly is meant to make traveling simpler. So what is the problem? I don't know whether we're asking for band-aids. What clearly comes across to us as citizens is a complete, it's just like a veil. I want you to put yourself in my position as a citizen. In July, we were, or June, you know, when, when this discussion was happening, we were told that this was coming up. We were obviously very concerned because we were wondering what this is. This is the eyesore, middle of the city. What does it really achieve? And within a few weeks or so, it was scuttled. More or less, there was no conversation about okay. it. So we presumed that it had died a natural death, like so many different things that the government goes through. And we understand because not every project has to go through to its final completion. We were surprised, uh, and I believe you know other people have placed uh, RTI for information. We were interested too. But what was really surprising was the way and the manner and the speed, the unseemly haste with which it suddenly came back into the front. You know, the front. Now, my question to you is this. As a citizen, I would be entitled to ask some questions about what does it serve? At what cost does it come? I'm not saying just obviously the financial cost. I'm talking about a lot of other costs. I'm talking also about in any way whether the spirit of the city is being maintained. Are we looking at a more, uh, a more holistic mobility plan for Bangalore? So we can say, are, are, we, are we interested in infrastructure? Of course we are. We spend hours in traffic and certainly that's a problem. But are we looking at public transport? I'd be the happiest person to use more of it. Why do I want to use my car? I walked from where I was. I will take a, a bus to the airport if I have the facility. I think we're undermining what citizens want. Okay. Today, I think what Bangalore has come out with, Maya, is a great desire to engage, a great desire to protect a city, and the increasing shock of having less and less information available and literally dragged out by, you know, by methods of torture to get the information. <laughs> and every time we get the information, I'll tell you why this fear, and my fear is increasing. I'm not connected to anyone, I don't want to be, I'm just here with fear in my heart for a city I love very much. A city you love very much, and you're talking about loss of the spirit of the city, because Bengaluru's trees that once the cliche term the garden city it's less and less the way the bridge is designed right now is there an option that it, there could be changes that would make people on both sides of this divide happy mr rk mishra urban planner and also a member of the vision group Bangalore. i seem to be in the middle i think three this side three that side i think both sides have a little bit of a issue um, i think citizens bangalore is having i'm part of bangalore's uh, you know CM's vision group. I also am technical advisor to BBMP and BDA. There are around 300 plus major projects are going in the city. Citizens never bothered okay. to ask for those and never got any information. And if they were engaged, I think Bangalore will not reach this. So, so it's good. It's good that they're engaging now. Why do you think this one has kind of caught the well? That's attention. that's. So I think this somehow people have got this very funny notion steel. All over the world, bridges are made of steel. Whole Tokyo is built of steel and there are every, see, everybody talks about Paris and London, they're tiny cities. Look at any Asian city. They have elevated corridors going through the city. Tokyo, Hong Kong, Beijing, Shanghai, Bangkok, Seoul, Seoul. Seoul everywhere. Where they're so, breaking up uh, breaking down. No, 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 no. They're breaking sorry, it down. <laughs> they're breaking it down. Seoul, Bangkok, Bogota. This is where Seoul has woken up. Yes. Seoul has woken up, but Bangalore wants to fall into that trap. It's so stupid. It's so stupid that we want to fall into a trap. The irony is Nitin Gadkari, who's been the highest number of highest number of flyovers in Mumbai. He himself has admitted, I have done the greatest mistake. I should not have put those flyovers in place. We are not against solving the traffic problem. But the government themselves have a mobility plan in which this is not envisaged at all. It was not planned in their own mobility plan. Today only because there's some other reasons, they've just come up with this thing. No, no, no. Clearly they're no, not no, quite... No, 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 no. I think, I think no, no, no. Not one minute, one minute. I think these people are living in, uh, I would say, imaginary world. When they are on the road, 
they are cribbing all the roads in bangalore are carrying the four to six i don't think any of them are urban planner or the transport expert i am i, I, I have a master's degree so, in traffic so management okay, can you keep quiet did i speak when you spoke yes. keep keep quiet okay now bangalore roads are choked bangalore metro when it is completed 250 kilometers all three yes, yes. will carry only 10% traffic correct so all this we all want trees roads cannot be wired into a fully developed city uh, try to demolish one of their houses i think mr uh, suresh kumar has given his house for road widening ask anybody so else they'll I. go to court no please so have i you cannot widen the roads you have to go vertical we may all want to walk can you walk from hebal to silk board you cannot it is a 60 70 km long city so you got to give now about steel i have a suggestion where almost 600 to 700 trees can be saved can be saved not the 800 plus well, yes, yes. Eight, i think there are many many small trees also been counted they have been very kind in counting <laughs> if you come to makri circle and take left go to kan road has already been widened the place uh, palace land has already been acquired it's already part of north south elevated corridor government has already planned 100 km of elevated corridors So I think this portion can be negotiated. They need to come together. The modification the way, in the, the design, way, the the Mr. Suresh Kumar. I mean, the flyovers not the way, not the way ahead. Your thoughts on this? Because you're both a citizen and also a politician. Mr. Arke Mishra claims to be an authority because he is the member of Vision Group. He is an advisor to BBMP, etc. Ultimately, we are voicing the concern of the people. Yes, those the people who are resisting or who are opposing in that group there are many many former town planners many architects who have come up with alternative solutions very small building small flyovers near really bottlenecks will solve the problem and we need to look at the many many, many flyovers. small flyovers why not look at many that's small flyovers yeah that's a good question i mean look at the experience of our city we have elevated road going from silk board junction to the electronic city we have an elevated road which goes just after hebbal to the airport yes. we have an elevated road which goes to nelamangala and just see what these elevated uh, uh, road uh, bridges have done they have decongested traffic if you remember before uh, the flyovers were built it was a very very bad situation now these elevated long uh, uh, flyovers have really helped the world over small flyover we also have the uh, experience of small flyovers mm -hmm. in the city they only yeah outer yeah, ring road i mean yes. it, it it's it's uh, it, it doesn't so work they, they for a, for yeah. uh, for the number of vehicles that we have and they are growing smaller flyovers will not, will so not try to test it no but see work. now <clears throat> it's very easy to talk about uh, you know cutting trees we all yeah. are, we all love trees but so like in my own constituency we building the okulipuram flyover for 200 crores yeah. we have cut 40 trees and the excellent big big trees but we had to do it because it's very necessary now we we all, all all want bangalore to be green but at the same time we need to solve the problems of bangalore city and if we try to solve the problem if someone has got a like the one thing i would like to suggest is if someone's got a suggestion on the flyover project making it better please give but if you have a closed mind and say we don't want the flyover then what is it what is there for the government to discuss with such people A, a close mind. Then he's saying like the, that the long flyovers have actually worked. That you know the, those who oppose it have a close mind. Yes, you know the, the assumption is that the flyover, if we give our suggestions, we'll actually be uh, collaborative. We'll get something better. My worry is every time more information about the flyover has come out, the the greater our fear because there's more stuff that is coming out. Security clearance issues, the underpasses that are being made, the fact that at some point, Maya, this is horrific. Where the apparently this is what we've come to know that your roller the roller coaster ride is for between 4 meters and 23 meters which means 63 feet it's a three story building i mean people with vertigo cannot travel on that but i i'm, I'm not being facetious every time more information comes from the uh, i mean from from the from from the site and which i can understand why they didn't want to give it in the first place more and more stuff comes up the esteem to hebal mall that space a kilometer and a half is added are we a lego city are we doing mechano bridges that we are going to add this last minute and say oh so sorry we forgot about that let's do that also that's what see i'm sorry i'm i'm saying this humorously but the pain in a bangalorean's heart when you're saying so what about this ah we'll do that what about that ah okay we'll do that also security oh okay we'll think about that as well that hurts so i don't believe I, more I, information I, 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 can result in more uh, i i i actually want i actually want i hope we are open to a scientific debate 
two leading institutions of this city which are global lights the indian institute of science and the indian institute of management both have on the record said this is a stupid project right there are issues please listen well we asked for the dpr we asked for 10 things only dpr got released where is the impact assessment where is the feasibility study report these are the documents on which we can critique we can study what were the number mobility numbers that were released in the dpr it was in this stretch if you give mobility numbers in this stretch and don't look at the integration with the neighborhood of the city you are going to screw up the city big projects only shift bottlenecks True. they bottlenecks. don't they yeah. shift bottlenecks now, and and bda bda yeah. and bbmp have the have the great record of building a magic box at kaveri circle they also have the great record of building kadrinalli by uh, underpass and the C professor cnr rao underpass i think professor cnr rao got his bharat ratna before the underpass got completed yes. prakash balwadi filmmaker months. director you're also very concerned about this flyover now we've heard from that side of the panel that long flyovers do work they decongest areas whether it's the electronics electronics many of them actually do help that we curse we complain about the traffic in the city but when the administration tries to do something there are objections coming up you know i don't think we should, we can fault the administration for having good intentions i agree and i'm not saying across the board everybody is uh, malafide in this but i think the nature of secrecy surrounding the project makes us suspect and the government's initial response to us because you know we don't know actually it's not a compliment compliment to the government that we are in the dark that we don't understand these issues it should have been shared with us it could have been discussed with us it was not done there's no point actually fighting over it it was not done period the dpr was released only on 15th of october okay after the protest began i'm saying this attitude of saying look we know best is not uh, is not going to hold water i've just come from indian institute of science and i've spoken to pro professors and you know we'll reveal uh, in our invitation today who all are coming they're very concerned and extremely bothered about the nature and the philosophy behind uh, such a there's a there's a problem of sustainable bangalore and there's a problem of sustainable mobility in this which which they have expressed and have just come from there so i don't think the government's case is going to hold uh at least with experts talks of secrecy talks of fear now we're talking about an infrastructure project meant to make the people of the city more comfortable and happier lots more to discuss time for a short break we'll get back after that